Hi, and welcome to the newest edition of the Jay Carp Show. And today, we will talk about the NHL playoffs and all the upsets that have occurred. Most notably, the fact that the, both the Pittsburgh Penguins and the Vancouver Canucks are out of the playoffs. Both losing by the Flyers and the Kings. Fans and the media are quick to criticize Pittsburgh and their stars for not getting the job done in the playoffs. Well, what do you expect? Honestly, in my opinion, they were the most overhyped team in the NHL. Yes, they were doing amazing, especially at the end stretch of the season. But come on, their goalie is not good. It's not He's not even average. He is just not that good. He has his good games, but still, he is not that good. Now, while some of the criticism is justified, it's important to acknowledge the play of the Philadelphia Flyers. And remember how the NHL seeds its playoff teams. No one should be shocked by the Flyers series win. I'm not. I'm as shocked that it took that long. I actually strike that. I, I thought it was going to be a good series. I thought it was going to be a long one. I'm surprised, though, that both defenses sucked this entire series. 10-3? to Are you freaking kidding me? What was that, defense in the bathroom the whole time? Either way, they came back and they won the series, and that's what matters. Now, the Penguins and Flyers finished first and second in scoring in the regular season and have almost identical power play percentage. Power play percentages, I should say. The Flyers boost a lineup full of offensive talent. The thing is, though, people don't know them as well as the Penguins. You got Jamal, James Neal and Cindy Crosby and Mark Andrew Fleury. Yeah, that's the goalie, the one that's not good. But. Daniel Breer leads the NHL in post-lockout playoff points with 104 in 103 games, while Claude Giroux, arguably with up there with Steven Stamkos, is one of the best players in the league right now. He finished with 93 points in 77 games this year. He also leads all playoff scores with 14 points. So now, with all the games of the first round finally done after both Boston and New York, I strike that, Boston's loss, and New York's win, we have the final playoff team for the second round. For the Eastern Conference, you have the New York Rangers, who beat the Ottawa Senators, the Flyers, who beat the Penguins, and the Devils from New Jersey, who beat the Florida Panthers, and the Washington Capitals, who beat Boston. Now, on the Western Conference side, you have the St. Louis Blues beating San Jose 4-1, to the Phoenix Coyotes, beating the Blackhawks, the Predators beating the Red Wings, and the, the surprise for a lot of people, the Los Angeles Kings, who beat the top-seeded Vancouver Canucks. The first round was certainly one to remember, but honestly, I think the semifinals can be just as, if not more, exciting. So here I'm going to go through every, every game that's going to be in this round and kind of give you my analysis and predictions for it. First, we'll start with the Eastern Conference. We have the Rangers versus the Capitals. Both teams barely made it. Not into the playoffs. Okay, Washington had trouble getting in. It had it not been for a Buffalo class, Washington wouldn't be in right now. But both teams barely made it out of the series from the first round. Both of them winning Game 7s. And this task coming up will be hard as well. This is a Washington team that just has knocked out the mighty defending Stanley Cup champ Boston Bruins. And in the process, show that it's capable of playing grinded out playoff style hockey. It also has a goaltender in, Br in Braden Holtby that's as good as anybody right now, not named Brian Elliott and Yaroslav Halak. And honestly, though, I think New York pulls this series out. I'm going with the Rangers. As for how many games, I can't really say. Honestly, they're not going to sweep. Maybe it'll be another game seven. But either way, it's going to be an interesting series. The key for Rangers to win is to keep Ovechkin in check, something they haven't done in the playoffs before. They're going to have to have an excellent chance of winning if they do that. So I see the New York Rangers beating the Washington Capitals. Next, in a way, it's going to be an easy prediction for this one, but then again, you never know. It's the Philadelphia Flyers versus the New Jersey Devils. Okay, now before you all say, why would you pick the Devils over the Flyers? I'm not. I'm going to flat, flat out say I am going with the Philadelphia Flyers. But don't underestimate this New Jersey Devils team. Personally, I think Martin Bruder is better than Alaya 
Vizgalov. That's just my opinion. And the thing is, New Jersey is offense is not as strong as Philly's. So Martin has a lot harder time, has a lot more work cut out for him. Now, Phil's offense propelled it into the second round. That series between Pittsburgh and Philly scored the most goals in a playoff series with, in the entire NHL. History, actually. Now, I will say that Bryce was very good in Game 7, and if you're the Flyers, you're hoping that that's the start of a hot streak for the Russian net netminder. New Jersey's big guns were kept relatively silent in the first round, and unless that changes, they will be in trouble. But like I said, the Flyers have Claude Giroux and Daniel Breyer, and I just don't see New Jersey scoring enough goals to keep pace with the Flyers. So I'm going with Philadelphia. Here's one that for a lot of people is the hardest one to pick. The St. Louis Blues and the Los Angeles Kings. Now, before I say something about the Blues, I'm going to say this is a Kings team that is far better, better than they finished in the standings. And they show that during a triumphant series victory over the President's Trophy winning Vancouver Canucks, which proves that the curse lives on for teams winning the President's Trophy. LA's physical style is a lot for opposing teams to handle, and in my opinion, they're better equipped on offense than the Blues. They also have one of the top five goalies in the league, and Jonathan Quick. However, the Blues have two of the top five goalies in the league. Their names, Brian Elliott and Yaroslav Halak. The Blues are a very good defensive team on their own right, and I think they've got more than enough talent to push this best of seven series to the brink. I see it as a low-scoring series, because if they're amazing goalies, the offense of both teams is not that strong. Now, as for my prediction, I see the Blues getting the best of the Kings. Not easy, but it'll take a lot of work harder than they've ever had to before. But I see the Blues playing it off because Quick is the only good goalie on Philly. Blues have two, and they're both going to get days off, days on. They're going to get plenty of rest. Quick, he won't. And plus, the Blues, in my opinion, have a better defensive team than the Kings. So I'm going with the St. Louis Blues. Now the final one, and this one actually looks like a pretty, ooh, what's, how would I look at? Pretty high scoring series. Maybe. This team has everything you look for in a cup contender. And this is the Nashville Predators. And they will be facing Mike Smith and the Phoenix Coyotes. Phoenix showed a lot of heart in beating the Blackhawks, and thank God they did. And Mike Smith continues to be a nightmare. He will stop whatever is shot at him, most of the time. And he'll be tough to beat, but then again, the Predators have just stormed into this playoff. They beat the Detroit Red Wings in five games. And I know you're saying, oh, wow, only five games. In that case, it's a lot. It's a lot to say, a lot to praise about that team. I'm also interested to see how effective Phoenix's offense is. Because with all due respect to the Hawks goaltender, Corey Crawford, he's not really that hard to beat. Pika Arena, on the other hand, is one of the best in the business, and I think that's going to be problematic for the opposition. Can Mike Smith match him save for save? I don't think so, but we will find out. Honestly, I see Nashville's offensive maneuvers overwhelming Mike Smith and the Coyotes. So for my final... Run down on my predictions. I got the Rangers and the Flyers for the Eastern Conference, and I got the Blues and the Predators in the Western. Those are my predictions, and I'm sticking to them. And I'll just say this. Before we go, I have one more thing to say. In Game 7 of the Boston-Washington series, one of the African-American players on the Capitals scored the winning goal. In a way, it was kind of a luck shot, but either way, he still did good. But after that, Boston fans be began dropping N-bombs on Twitter and other social media networks. Boston, go the hell up. Seriously, just because the Red Sox sucked us and the Bruins got bombed out of the playoffs doesn't mean you have to go all racism on them. The guy is a good player, and there's not a lot of African-American hockey players in the NHL. And I'm glad he, did, he got that goal. It means something to him. But seriously, there's something between being a diehard fan 
and just a crazy piece of crap. And that's what the Boston fans were after that game. Well, thank you for turning in to this episode of the Jay Carp Show, and I will see you next time.